uh, since. I just sent him a text message uh, that had a lot of exclamation points in it. Following on Twitter, I was waiting for you to tweet it out. No, I, uh, I honestly, I've looked at my phone for two seconds, and that's about it. I've been talking to media. Yep, good to go. I, uh, I had an ankle injury in the last game of the year, but uh, I'm fine now. So. So talk about how Stanford's offense was actually quite varied. Uh, you destroyed Cal Prevost, but talk about how it prepares you for you know, Well, I think uh, credit goes to the coaches for putting us in positions to be successful. I mean, using the tight ends in ways that, um, you know, make us look like wide receivers or offensive linemen or uh, traditional tight ends or flexed out tight ends. I mean, it's, it's really a great opportunity going to Stanford. and. Uh, being able to play a variety of positions. Kobe, you left West Lamb at fullback, didn't you? I'm sorry? West Lamb at fullback, didn't you? Yeah, there's, there's a significant amount of plays where uh, you line up as a fullback type player at Stanford, at least, yeah. Kobe, did you guys play the what if game at Stanford? Like, just in your wildest dreams, what if we were able to? Yeah, I, uh, I had definitely thought about it, and I'm sure I've mentioned it to Andrew. And uh, as the draft kind of progressed, each pick, uh, on one hand, it's kind of more agonizing because you're further away from that first round, but at the same time, uh, there was kind of that, that gleam of hope that would have been you know, with Andrew. So uh, I can't even begin to describe how excited I am to be a cool. Can you sort of call, characterize the luxury of being able to go into a, a familiar situation like that with your quarterback? Yeah, um, you know, I, I expected to be on a team where I wouldn't be familiar with the quarterback or the offense or anything like that and um, it would essentially be starting from scratch but uh, I'm excited that I at least have the timing with Andrew uh, and familiarity and that we'll be able to kind of go through this together. You're going to Indianapolis they have a very strong passing offense tradition there at this point they are rebuilding but they like to use Dallas Clark you've got Andrew Luck there how excited are you to go to an offense that well, maybe not isn't tailor-made to what you can do, but definitely has a role for you right away. Oh, I'm excited. I mean, I, I, uh, I can't wait to get started, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, if we could ship me out today and uh, get started tomorrow, I'd be happy to do it. What will you miss most about Stanford? Ooh, what will I miss most about Stanford? Uh, you know, I think... The camaraderie we had at, at Stanford between the players was something special. Uh, I'll miss team meals, you know, not only the guys, but also we had some pretty darn good food there too. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, I, and I think our coaching staff is excellent. So uh, there's a lot of things I miss about Stanford. Coach, you talk about how Andrew's the right guy or the leader he has to step in and have a take. Yeah, um, I mean, Andrew's a uh, proven winner. And he's the epitome of leadership by example. Um, you know how he'll be as an NFL quarterback is yet to be written in the history books, but I think uh, he's put the right foot forward in every way possible. Well, the, uh, the style of offense that Coach Harbaugh put in at Stanford, uh, with the help of Coach Shaw and eventually Coach Hamilton and uh, Bloomgren, and on and on and on. Um, allowed me to be the player that I am today. Um, without them, I, you know, who knows where I would be, but you know, I'm, I'm thankful that I went to Stanford and that I had the opportunity to be coached by uh, some really, really great coaches. Kobe, so, do you have any... There's some people just been a problem in the Bay Area. Even as Tom has left, it's still Tom Ross offense and not Shaw. And Shaw's been the offensive coordinator for some time, right? Well, but, so yeah, his, his question was, how did Coach Harbaugh prepared me? Uh, so that's what I responded to. But uh, yeah, I mean, Coach Shaw is definitely uh, in strong command of the offense at this point uh, with the help of Coach Bloomgren, Coach Hamilton. Um, and so they, they do an awesome job uh, utilizing their tight ends, um, teaching their quarterbacks. Shoot, they, they've done an awesome job over the past five years since I've been there. Cody, can you have any semblance of a decent night's sleep last night, or what was the, what was uh, your night like? You know, I just try to kind of put the idea of not going in the first round out of my mind, and uh, honestly, my, my hope was that uh, the Colts would pick me at uh, 34. 
And so uh, I'm thankful to be sitting here with you guys with a, a Colts hat on. Okay, there was a lot of speculation about the Giants being very interested in you. Uh, how much contact did you have with them ahead of time? Did you feel when it got to that pick and you were still there that that might be it for you? You know, um, I had talked to the Giants. I had talked to their tight end coach at the Combine, talked to um, him when he came to our pro day, Coach Pope, a uh, great guy. And, um, you know, I, I didn't know. You, you never know. Um, you sit in the green room and you kind of hope that your phone rings and you sit there and try to imagine it ringing. But, you know, it didn't ring. And I don't know why. I don't know what happened. Um, you know, I heard some kind of rumblings that, um, you know, whatever recently that they wouldn't, you know, like me as their tight end. That's that's fine. I mean, they have their preferences. Did you have any concern that, or did they ever indicate any concern about your blocking? No, they never uh, indicated any concern or asked me about it. Can you talk to Dallas Carr, maybe the Colts have proven Uh I have not. Kobe, when you look at the, uh, the past NFL season and how tight ends really kind of made their mark. How do you think that affects you and that strike you and how they're being used? Well, I, I've said before that I, you know, I, I couldn't be happier uh, to be coming out at this time, you know, with guys like uh, Greg Kowski and Jimmy Graham, you know, breaking records. And I mean, I, I could go down a list of about 10 tight ends that had awesome years last year. Um, and so to be even considered in that, that same sentence or said in that same sentence as those guys is an honor. Um, you know, I, I've never played a down of NFL football, so I don't think it's a fair uh, comparison at all. But uh, I, I'm thankful for what they've done for the game and for the tight end class coming out this year. You said you were holding out hope last night that maybe uh, Indianapolis could take you here at uh, 34. Did, earlier today, did you hear anything in the league that where the St. Louis took you, you would end up a hole? Or was that just, just fine out? Wait, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Did, did you just find out, or did you hear anything earlier today, you know, Andrew or maybe uh, Mr. Ur say that Indianapolis might pick you up? No, you know, I talked to Andrew last night and congratulated him. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, he had good things to say about me, but uh, he and I both realized that the Colts have their own plan, and it's not him choosing the picks. Um, so, you know, we were excited at the the possibility, but I had no idea until my phone rang and said uh, it was an Indiana area code. How does it feel to have so many Stanford guys? Jonathan Martin just went to Miami, but so many Stanford guys oh, awesome. go in the first couple of rounds of draft. When really, you know, four or five years ago, that wasn't necessarily the case, and and to be a part of that as well. Well, I think it's an awesome indication of uh, Stanford football's rise and kind of hopefully consistent. Uh, level of high play. It's one of those things where, you know, five years ago when the team was 1-11, uh, it's, it's much harder to tell a scout that we have high quality players when we've only won one game. Um, but when you go to two straight BCS games, and obviously Andrew brings a lot of attention to the team, um, which the other guys are very thankful for, myself included. Um, it's one of those things where you're happy to have gone that far, and hopefully the, the Stanford football program will continue to just kind of raise the bar. Cody, we've all seen uh, Andrew's physical skills on, on the field, just mentally and in the huddle. Uh, what does he do uh, to, to lead the team, and, and how does that translate into this phenomenal record Stanford's had the past two years? Well, I think it, it begins with his understanding of the offense. He, um, he could tell you what every player's job on the field on any given play. And I think that'll be eventually the case at Indianapolis as well, just because he's that intelligence to be able to do it and uh, do it well. And so from, from there, um, you move into the, the finer details, and he has no problem with that either. So he's a brilliant kid, and um, yeah, but, but wouldn't hold it over your head. You know, he, he's one of the guys. You're right. When Andrew's ability to sort of manipulate defenders, how he looks people off, especially when you guys play multiple tight ends, how did effective was that at allowing you to get the patterns and opening the scrap? Yeah, I think 
think what you're talking about is a combination of things. Um, not only Andrew's ability to look off, but also the coaching staff, uh, again, putting us in positions to be successful. Uh, we, we were a run-first offense, typically, and so when we used play action, and Andrew would look, up, look to his left, they, they would believe it, you know. Um, and when he came back to the right and threw it to a tight end, whether it was myself or uh, Zach Ers, who would be in Toilola, we would probably see sitting here uh, at some point in the near future, you know, it, it, they believe it. You know, he's, he's a smart kid and knows how to look off defenders, and it, it works. There was a, a comment by an unnamed scout recently that was in one of the three they were called the most overrated players. When you heard that comment, your reaction was? Um, you know, you, you try not to take it personally because everybody's entitled to their opinion, but uh, at the same time, you use it as motivation. You know, I, I can't control what people say. I guess it's better to be talked about than uh, anonymous, you know. And, and just the fact that you, you do have a comfort level with him, you know, this team is kind of starting over, but uh, and how much of a head start will you guys have in uh, rebuilding this offense? Well, I think, you know, having played with each other for four years now, it's definitely a head start as far as timing and feel for each other is concerned. But uh, we're both heading into this not knowing the offense. Um, and hopefully we can pick it up quickly and hit the ground running. Any other questions? What happened with your hair? <laughs> the hair, uh, it was just in time for the combine. Uh, I wanted to make sure it was business-like you know, for an interview, and uh, it was long enough to donate, so I was able to do that. It was long enough to donate. It has to be 10 inches to donate. Yes, sir. Thank you. For more coverage of the 2012 NFL Draft, check out the NFC North blog at Bleacher Report.